The Redeemer is a legend among the people of Necromunda, a furious firebrand and fanatical warrior whose devotion to the redemption is unmatched by his peers. Once he was a noble of Clan Cordor, known as Lord Clovis, and enjoyed the wealth of the clan's upper classes in Hive Primus. Some even say he could have taken up the mantle of Thane should he have wanted it, but instead chose a different path. Casting off the trappings of nobility, the Redeemer set out into the Underhive to purge the unclean and spread the word of the redemption. It was not long before he had drawn a band of zealous followers, fighters drawn to the strength of his convictions and the brutal methods he favoured. Deacon Malakev, a diminutive servo scribe, is perhaps the most well known of these. A devoted member of the faith turned into a servitor, he follows the Redeemer on his crusades, diligently recording his great deeds as well as carrying the Liber Excruciatus, Clovis's infamous book of tortures. A lifetime of bringing the righteous redemption to the outcasts and heretics of Necromunda has hardened the Redeemer against such petty notions as pity or mercy, and those who face him know they can expect no quarter from the zealous warrior. To further terrify his foes, the Redeemer wears a flaming crown upon his head, its blazing fires spitting and sparking as his furious gaze burns into his enemies. His former wealth as a noble and his connections to the upper circles of House Cordor afford him weapons and war gear of exceptional quality. His crimson robes hide quilted mesh armour, able to stop auto rounds and las blasts while he favours well-maintained chain weapons like his custom Eviscerator, known as the Sword of Persecution. Rumour has it that he has even built a fortress somewhere out in the Ash Wastes and has his own armoured transport that he uses to purge the wilds of mutants, monsters and other heretics. The greatest strength of the Redeemer, however, is not his considerable skill as a warrior or the unique weapons he carries, but rather the strength of his faith. In many ways, he is the embodiment of the redemption, a pure expression of religious fury given form. Followers of the redemption fight harder under his gaze, just as enemies of the faith quail in fear, a terror only reinforced by the Redeemer's methods for cleansing the souls of the unbelievers through torture. As the Redeemer himself likes to say, if it doesn't hurt, it doesn't count. Kia ora and welcome back to Wellywood Wargaming. My name is Damon and this is the series where I give you all of the agents of Necromunda in bite-sized video format with a little bit of lore there for Clovis the Redeemer and his faithful sidekick and scribe Malakev. Now we've got some really awesome looking miniatures to look at here with some great rules as well and I have to say I have used this guy in a campaign as a leader as well. Um, a little bit suspect on that one but I'll explain later. Before I get started in the video though please do like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon as well and support the channel. Any way that you can. So, Clovis the Redeemer and Malakev, lots and lots of fluff and lore on this guy. Uh, there are books, there are comics as well. I believe Inferno was a comic with this guy in it. Um, and there's been, you know, previous models of this guy back in 95 or whenever it was that uh, Outlanders came out. We did have the old metal version of these models. And uh, the new uh, Forge World resin models are similar, but not quite the same. Um, the old metal model of Malakev, the sidekick, was pretty much like a mad little monk. Um, now, though, he's got a servo body and he's mostly made of metal. I'm not quite sure what happened in the lore. Please do tell me down below in the comments um, what exactly happened to Malakev, but he no longer resembles a human being. He is, in fact, a sort of walking uh, book or um, altar almost, uh, which is pretty cool. Really, really good looking model. I, I love the grim darkness of that. I don't actually own these models yet, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, I'd like to get them at some point. Uh, Clovis himself, though, Quite a good-looking redemptionist model. Clearly redemptionist, not just a, your, your average Cordor, but a giant uh, eviscerator held aloft with a, a flaming flaming hairdo and, of course, the Liber Excruciatus in the left hand there as well. Some nice-looking robes and whatnot. I have to say, his model looks a bit busy for me, and, I, and that pipe that sticks out of the um, eviscerator looks a bit uh, awkward as well. Certainly, if it's Forge World resin, it's going to be quite hard to assemble that and, of course, keep it intact through your games as well. But Malakev, for me, what an amazing amazing miniature that is, I have to say. Anyway, looking at Clovis the Redeemer and Malakiv in the game, um, they're pretty good. Uh, like I said, I have actually used Clovis the Redeemer himself on his own as an outcast leader 
in a campaign with outcast uh, gangers uh, with redemptionist backing. So um, that was kind of cool. Uh, whether or not you can do that or not, it's fine. I just did it for the fluff. Uh, and he was pretty good, I have to say. Uh, Clovis the Redeemer's stats are as follows. He has a movement of five, weapon skill of three plus, because he's definitely much more of a warrior in close combat. Ballistic skill six plus, but that's fine because you don't really have any shooting weapons here. He's also got a strength and toughness of three. Average three wounds, though, with initiative of three up and three attacks. So pretty good on the all-out fighting stats and quite survivable with those three wounds as well. However, strength and toughness are pretty average there. Mental stats are leadership 7+, plus, cool 5+, plus, willpower 6+, plus, and intelligence 8+. Plus. So he's not the smartest guy, but that's typical for a redemptionist generally. Now he comes with a set of skills, and there's a bit of debate around these ones. The first one is devotional frenzy, which is a pretty good one. It means for a cost of a flesh wound, you can sort of have better attacks and stuff. He's also got fearsome, um, which is completely uh, irrelevant and not used here because of another skill that he's got, but we'll get onto that in a second. Um, true True Grit, which is a great ferocity um, skill, keeps him alive a bit longer, makes him a bit tougher. And the weird one here, we've got Restless Faith as well, meaning that for the cost of a flesh wound, you can come into your next game. Now, that does work if you use this guy uh, as an outcast leader, and I certainly did use that. Um, but it doesn't work, of course, if you're hiring him for one game. That won't really make much of a difference. Um, so that's that with uh, the skills there. In terms of uh, his equipment, of course, he's got the Eviscerator, um, the special Master Crafted Eviscerator. So you've got that Master Crafted ability on the Eviscerator. Otherwise, Eviscerators are great. They've got Sever, 1-inch Versatile, and they're just really, really nasty with a built-in sort of hand flamer as well. He's got flak armor, which is strange considering the law there, if you were listening, um, states quite specifically that he has mesh woven into his robes. However, in this instance, we've got flak in the rules. An incombustible hallbook, the book of redemption, and the pyromantic mantle there as well. Some really cool stuff. Pyromantic mantle, I believe, gives you close combat attacks blaze as well. So that eviscerator is blazing at range and in close combat. We've also got the incombustible hauberk, meaning that you can sort of act normal if you're on fire as well, somewhat. Um, now, here's where it gets sort of weird. Obviously, we've got fearsome reputation, which is the same as terrifying. So he is, he's got terrifying and fearsome, but he doesn't really need both because terrifying trumps fearsome, if that makes sense. So you need to make a willpower check to fight him or indeed shoot him which is pretty cool so he's a bit like a corpse grinder in that respect awesome uh, he also generates articles of faith for your cordor and redemptionist gangs as well and he generates three dice too so he, he generates a lot of faith indeed um, and he can perform articles of faith himself um, with the path of the redeemer as his chosen path there too uh, the Liber Excruciatus is as follows. We have, if both fighters are active and within one inch of each other, Clovis can spend a basic action, know your fate. D3 enemies chosen by Clovis within line of sight uh, and within nine inches of Clovis must make a nerve test with a minus one modifier. A nice little extra thing to have there. But you do have to have both fighters uh, next to each other to do that. That is Clovis and Malakev as well. Talking of Malakev though, Malakev's stats are as follows. He's got movement 4, weapon skill 5+, plus, ballistic skill 6+, plus. so he's pretty naff in close combat and at range, but that's not really his, uh, his point. He's got a strength of 2, but a toughness of 4. Two wounds, initiative five up and one attack, and his mental stats are leadership seven plus, cool six plus, uh, willpower seven plus, and intelligence eight plus there as well. So stats aren't particularly great. Comes with built-in skills of evade and lie low, mean, meaning that he's a bit harder to hit out in the open, which is quite cool. Um, weapons, none, and war gear, he comes with light carapace armor, so he's actually better armoured than Clovis himself, that's for sure. Um, he's also a bodyguard, so if any other fighter, sorry, if the other fighter is within two inches and hit by a ranged attack, the hit and all its effects can be transferred to this fighter, much like one of the little skull servos that you get with the Redemptionists as well, which is pretty cool, um, especially when he's toughness four and two wounds. This guy can take the hit a lot of the time. Uh, he's also a dedicated follower, so he can be included with Clovis and cannot be hired on his own. Uh, must be deployed within three inches of Clovis at the start of the battle. Uh, we then have Scribe, which is another special rule that uh, Malakiv has here. Plus three D, sorry, plus D3 reputation to the hiring gang if both Malakiv and Clovis are on the battlefield at the end of the game and not seriously injured. So that's a pretty nice one as well. Of course, these guys are outlaw outlaws as well. 
Um, and this uh, guy himself, Malakev, does not um, generate any articles of faith, so um, that's absolutely fine. Um, in terms of the costing, they are 100 credits to hire as an agent at the lowest petition value and 200 at the most. Um, yeah, really, really good, really awesome fluff, um, a, an absolute beast in close combat, and uh, Malakev's just a great miniature to add to your collection. So not really much more I can say about that. As an outcast leader, he was pretty cool. I did give him some sort of upgrades. I gave him better armor, I believe a displacer field later on throughout the campaign. Uh, in terms of costing him as an outcast leader, though, I think I probably did it wrong at the time, but this was around about the time that the Book of the Outcast came out, so those rules were quite fresh. I just put him on his own without Malakev in my gang as the leader for 200 credits, which I think now is very under-costed for what he was, uh, and he was certainly pretty potent in games, I have to say. Um, with a few stat increases and a bit more war gear, he was he was very powerful indeed. Did some really cool shenanigans and uh, chopped up a lot of Ogrins in one game, I remember, with his uh, sever on his uh, eviscerator. It was really nasty. Um, but yeah, really, really good fighters and uh, definitely a, a nice um, collection of models to add to your existing Cordor or Redemptionist range. Of course, you could just use these guys as proxy for a Redemptionist leader, Redemptor Priest or something like that. And he certainly stands out from the crowd being a little bit bigger uh, with that eviscerator held aloft as well. So food for thought there on how you might use these guys, either as agents or as, um, you know, leader in outcast gang, etc. as usual. But that's it from me for uh, Clovis the Redeemer and Malakev. What do you think about these guys? Have you used them in your games? I'd really like to know. Uh, and I'll be back with another video real soon. Peace out.